Hey everyone, welcome. Eric Coffey, your host, GovCon Giant. Today I have Cecil Whitlock here with me, and we're having a conversation. Uh, Cecil has a lot of experience. He actually purchased uh, a company that was formerly 8A. He took over that company. And I've heard his story several times, but I thought it'd be great for some of you out here to actually hear his story directly from Cecil himself and to find out a little bit about his path and his journey towards now working with one of the very successful tribal contracting companies in the country, uh, Miami Nation. And I definitely want to hear about the path that he took to get here. This is going to be a, a much shorter episode than we traditionally do because, uh, again, I, you know, one of the things that I that I do in, in every, all of my messaging and my programming that I deliver to you is I bring you stories of other people in hopes that you can learn through their experiences. And a lot of times we talk about mentors and what does it look like to have a mentor. Even if you can't have a mentor working with you directly, uh, you have someone like Cecil whose story may inspire you, encourage you, or may trigger something inside of you that makes you look at things a little bit differently. And because I'm very fascinated with his story, uh, I, I definitely want to bring it to people out there and share it with the world. So thank you for listening. Cecil, take it away. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, I started my career, uh, <laughs> needless to say, a long time ago, uh, primarily in the federal market and uh, was with a very large company and decided it was just not, not for me. So I, I was uh, hired by a company in Florida, Tampa, Florida, called J2 Engineering. They were a 8A uh, company. They uh, did fantastic with their job, the owner of the company who started it. And um, they were getting to a point where they were getting close to graduating and when I was hired. And I came in and the one thing I wanted to do was build to make sure the company would be there. Most day days they go out and they get sole source work or they get on some kind of contracts and then when they get to their nine years, it's 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 over for them, and I didn't want that. Uh, what I wanted is is to, to have this company build on what they had. So we went in and bid, bid uh, Maytok, Saytok, uh, Mac contracts, and we won uh, 16 billion dollars worth of contract mechanisms uh, for J2 Engineering, and uh, they had a lot of sole source work on top of that and they actually graduated in seven years instead of nine years because they I think the max at that time was like 200 250 million and they they tapped that out so they graduated early well when we won all these contracts what that did for us is uh, the owner of the company he actually wanted to go back to school and uh, came to me and wanted to sell the company so I bought the company and uh, built on these contracts and uh, was what I call successful is that we won, we won a lot of work. Uh, but uh, what it did is when the 8A, when we graduated, we got to keep all the contracts that we had, the Max, the Matox, the Satox, all of them. Now, real quick, I'm sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about like IDIQ stuff. Correct. Right, so, so when he's talking about the $16 billion, it was IDIQs, Matox, Max. Correct. Uh, so they were the contract vehicles that we talk about a lot on our show here, uh, and that's what Cecil leveraged to start growing the company even further. Correct, and, and so what we did is, you know, we, we were getting in our RFPs pretty much daily off of all these contracts, and we would bid them, and we didn't want them all, but we won, you know, better than 30% of everything we bid, which in, in turn led to, you know, millions of dollars worth of contract work. So uh, I, I did this for several years and got it to a point uh, I was getting tapped out on my bonding, to be honest with you. And, and uh, uh, so I was approached by another very large engineering firm in, uh, I think it's 2015, and I sold the company. And uh, 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 went to, uh, uh, actually was gonna retire. And uh, I, I, I just couldn't do it. I, I, after about six months of sitting at the house and playing golf and doing not, not much of anything, I, I went right. back to work. And, right. Now I'm working for the Miami Nation, uh, and what I'm bringing to the table at Miami Nation is not only sole source work, but even more important, I'm going after these IDIQ contracts, your right. Max and your Matox, and 
uh, it's I've, we've won several. Uh, we're, we we bid those as much as we possibly can, and what that does is they're usually you know, five, seven, ten-year contracts. And, and even if you graduate, you get to keep those. So you, uh, you, right. you, they don't run out. Right. So it just gives you longevity in your company, and, and you can, you can uh, uh, live off of those for a number of years. Right, right. And then even when you're graduated, you can still bid those type contracts. So I suggest that you know everybody, especially 8As, learn how to bid these contracts. Right. And once you learn how to do them and get involved into them, uh, you, you see that it is just a it's it's a great thing and right. it, it's the longevity of a company. Right, right, right. And again, just to reiterate, he's talking about the IDIQs, IDVs that we discuss. Now, um, some of the questions that people commonly ask is, okay, when you were first getting started, and maybe you don't know this because you bought the company. How did you get to the point where you're able to graduate early? Like, how did, do you know what they did? What, yeah. At what point did you come on to J2 Engineering? I came on very, very near the end, right before, okay. they, right before they graduated. Okay. Right. And uh, what, what it was is they had an, an enormous amount. They had some really good salespeople, first uh -huh. of all. And uh, they, they got a lot of sole source work right. uh, with Navy bases, Army. Uh, right. They also teamed, actually, Y'all heard me say earlier that I was a very large company. It was called AECOM. They were they were one of my teaming partners, ah. and uh, we we actually teamed with them on a uh, very large SATOC out of uh, uh, AFSI okay. at that time, yep. and uh, they we we won that together, and mm. then and then we also we won the large business one. And then J2 won the small business. Right. So okay. we, we actually won both of those. Okay. All right. So that's how we did it. Nice, nice. Um, so then you come on. Now, how did you, and again, we don't have to divulge all the details, but did you want to buy the company? What was that like? Actually, I did. <laughs> I had owned a, uh, an environmental company back uh -huh. earlier in my career right. and sold it. And, uh, and in, uh, I was approached by the owner of the company right. and wanted me to buy the company because I had come in and got all these contracts and we were moving forward and doing a lot of really good things with the company and like I said he he was he was actually wanting to go back to he was actually in school in law school and he wanted to go back to law school full time and and be a, an attorney versus the construction business you know it's interesting I don't think anyone everyone listening to this would say He's crazy if he has all these contracts and he's done all this tens of millions of dollars of work. Why would he want to go to a school? Well, the, the, uh, how do I say this? <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Uh, but he, he, there was a couple of little, what I would call little messes that I had to clean up within okay. the company when right. I bought it out. And right. I knew it. I knew, I knew we had to clean up some stuff, and, which we did. And, uh, uh, but uh, the, I, I, think, I think the... Headache of running the business for right. eight or seven years. Yeah. I, I think it just finally, like, I want to go to law school. It's going to be easier. And I, I think he found out differently after he got in school. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go to law school. I wouldn't want to go to law school either. Yeah. No, no, absolutely not. No, that's cool. Um, and then you moved over to the Miami Nation and you work at the Miami Nation. Um, and what, what are some of the things that you've done there with the Miami Nation? Well, the Miami Nation, uh, I came in just heading up their construction company. Right. Uh, and uh, we, the Miami Nation is a 8A uh, uh, tribally owned company. Right. We, uh, we have, when I came in, we, we actually opened up the 8A about six months after I was there. Okay. So it wasn't even formed when I came on board. Right. And uh, when I, uh, one of the things that I'm doing is, I'm, you know, I like, don't get me wrong, I like sole source work. I love going after sole source work. It's good work, but you, you can't sustain a company with sole source work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it, it's just not going to happen. Right. So you need to go after, you need to bid RFPs to learn how to do it. Right. Uh, you need these, these IDIQ contracts. I, I think those are the easiest way to grow. Uh -huh. um, and it limits your competition, right. and and uh, they're they're great. Uh, one of the things you have you do have to have. Uh, I know a new A day. One of the hardest things to do is get past performance mm -hmm. bonding. There's a right. lot of things involved, but you can get teaming partners to do that. Right. You know, that's kind of like what 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 I have done. I've right. got several JVs and teaming partners right. with the Miami Nation. Right. Right. So. 
Right. Um, at what point or what stage would you say, again, I'm a, let's say I'm a small business, a two to five person company, at what stage would you say that I should reach out to someone like you guys to be a potential teaming partner? Like, what, what do you look for in a teaming partner? Maybe that's, that's a two-fold question, but let's, just, let's yeah. start with what do you look for in a teaming partner? M mostly what I look for is, is, is contacts. Okay. I, do, you, do you bring something to me? Right. You know, like, like, like I, I, you would be a surprise. This, the Miami Nation uh, just got a lot of bonding, a lot of past performance. Right. There, there's a lot of really good things about the Miami Nation. Uh, but when I get a teaming partner coming in, whether it be a JV or teaming or whatever, um, what do they bring to the table? Mm. Uh, a lot of companies think, well, I'm going to team up with this tribally owned company and they're going to give me business. It, right. it, it doesn't work that way. Right. I, I, I don't give people business. I, I, I team and we work together mm. on getting business or I'm out there getting business myself. Right. Uh, so if you're bringing things to the table, I, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm on top of that. Okay. I, I, like, I like people who bring things. Uh, I'm not saying give me everything. That's not, absolutely not what I'm saying. Right. Uh, I, but I really like helping 8A companies grow. Mm -hmm. uh, I know how to grow them. I've, I've done it for a long time. Right. But uh, it, like if I'm in a, we're, we're based out of the Washington DC area. We have a lot of work all over the country. But if we go to areas that we've never done work before, mm -hmm. it's easier for me to team with somebody in that area to get the work and bring it in than it is for me to go in and hire people and try to start from scratch and doing nothing to, to build up an area that I'm trying to go into. No, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and, and we talk about this, make sure that you bring value. You don't just call people on the phone, right, and not offer value to them. Yep. Um, that's the quickest way to get the door slam in your face. Yep, so. absolutely. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. Um, how long have you been there at the Miami Nation? Uh, right at two years. Okay, two years. Yep. Okay. Um, and what do you see like in the near future? Where do you guys see your, your head at in the near future? Oh, I, we're doing a lot of really good things right now with, you know, with, with uh, teaming partners and JVs. Um, we, have, we have a JV partner right now that we're, we got, uh, which we weren't, weren't in at all until I got there, doing uh, modular buildings. Okay. Uh, and that has really taken off uh, okay. with our JV partner. And then we have teaming agreements with people when, you know, with construction companies right. and all. We have a lot of, of uh, IDIQ contracts that we're constantly bidding. Right. Uh, and we have, the, the, the Miami Nations, we have six um, different uh, 8A companies. It isn't just one company. We, we have a construction company, we have an IT company, we have an environmental company, we have uh, a, uh, uh, what's called a fencing construction company. So there's, there's different things that these companies do. But what, what happens is, is when I'm bidding on a construction contract, let's say this happened actually, um, I, I brought in my IT company to do all the cabling and data and everything else. And then I brought in my, my modular company and we, because this was a modular job and we got all the modular out of that Smart. company. Then we brought in our environmental company to do all the environmental on the site. Because uh, when you're putting in these modular units, you, you got to have an environmental site assessment yeah. or something. Yeah. So I bring in my different companies to do that work, but it's all up underneath one company. Wow. And, and, you know, past performance on this is, I can't stress how much past performance does for you. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're out there and you don't have any past performance, if you team with somebody, you get that past performance right. for that. Not, not if you team with somebody and you need to say, Twenty thousand dollars worth of work, and the job's a million dollars. Right. Yeah. That is a, you get to say, "I did a million dollar job." Right. So it, it, that's, that's pretty it, neat. It's it's, it's 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 very important. Past performance is very important. No, that's that's, that's great. No. Um, again, I think that a lot of times we, as small businesses, um, we think that because we're eight A, people are going to give us contracts. No, it doesn't work. Our hub zone, they give us contracts. <laughs> no. We think that um, the SBA is going to call us up, tell us where to go, and navigate us, and, and help us part the seas. Right? I, I got a story about SBA. If you want to hear. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I, I mean, listen, if you want to tell it, tell it that. It, it, we, we want to stay on SBA's good side. So. No, no, no. SBA, don't get me wrong, they're great. Right. Okay. But uh, if, you think, if you think SBA is going to go out there and get you a sole source project or a project of any type, uh -huh. uh, d d you're going to be sitting at home broke. Uh, you've got to go and use SBA to your advantage. Right. And I, I, I like doing that. I like all the SBA people that I work with. Uh, they, they, they do a very good job, but uh, you've got to di help direct them to do the job for you. Right. So it's, it's not a, and they will, they absolutely will. Right. And uh, that's what I like about it. But uh, uh, you do have to go and, and, and get everything prepared for SBA and give it to them and let them do their job. But you've, you have got to develop that because if you're going to wait on SBA, I, I'm telling you, you're just, you're, you're going to be sitting at home starving to death. So. Uh, hey, listen, everyone, this is just a quick story. I just want to feature a success story with Cecil Whitlock of the Miami Nation, give you a little bit about his background, um, and then let you in some of the insights. This is how I learn, this is how I grow, this is how I'm able to elevate myself and my business as well, because again, I sit down and I talk to people like this who have, you know, he was doing this stuff before I was even involved in federal contracting. He's worked for a lot of um, national firms. He's, again, we're talking about an 8A firm that graduated early. You can learn a whole lot from talking with people like this. Uh, one of the things that I want to leave you with before we part ways today is uh, I was reading, and I can't remember exactly where I read that at, but it says if you want help from someone, you ask for advice. And again, a lot of people like to talk about themselves. If you wanted to reach out to someone, uh, a, a good strategy, a good idea is to talk to someone who already graduated from the 8A program. Several of my past guests uh, have reached out to former 8A graduates, uh, whether they be good or bad. I mean, they don't have to necessarily have been uh, such a, a wild success like Cecil uh, and the organization that he took over. Um, but again, you can learn from people's failures as well as people's successes. So one of the things I'd like to leave you with is, is definitely if you are um, at the very least, if you're thinking about 8A, you've heard about 8A, or even government contracting for that part, talk to people who've already been there, done that, who have the experience, and then learn and gain insights and, and take that and apply it to your business and, and your methodology and as part of your strategy moving forward of things to do and versus things also not to do. So again, just wanted to kind of highlight Cecil. I grabbed him to the side. I said, hey, let's make this quick video for everyone out there. Share a little bit about his story um, and hope that it inspired some people, encouraged you, gave you some different ideas, things to think about. I didn't want to drive this out too long. So Cecil, you want to just tell everyone, say some parting words? No, I just uh, thank y'all for your time. And uh, if I can help y'all in any way, just feel free to call Eric and uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to do what I can. Thank you guys. Take care. Now,